<coughs> this is my country. This is my flag. I hate these five stars with all of my life. These are my gentries. These are my flats. Come on, sing up, change the damn flag, please. <laughs> this is Singapore's flag. It is a bicolor of red over white. The red symbolizes universal brotherhood and equality of men, and the white symbolizes pervading and everlasting purity and virtue. There's a crescent in the upper left quadrant standing for a young nation on the ascendant. Next to it are five stars for the ideals of democracy, peace, progress, justice, and equality. I hate this flag. Wait, wait, wait. Let me explain. Vaxillology is the study of flags, and according to the five principles of flag design, Singapore's flag is... It's fine. It's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the flag, it's, I guess. It's, it's fine. But to me, everything about this flag from its creation, history, meaning, and design symbolizes pretty much everything wrong about Singapore. And to understand why, we need to look at my favorite flag, the flag of Ukraine. <laughs> Ukraine's flag is a simple bicolor of blue over yellow and is a representation of Ukraine's blue sky over a field of wheat. The blue sky is a reference to freedom and the use of the flag during Ukraine's rise to independence. The yellow field is a representation of Ukraine's agricultural history and role as one of the world's largest producer of grains. It's simple, it's memorable, and choke full of history. Now, let's take a look at Singapore's flag. The Singapore's flag was designed by a committee led by our former Deputy Prime Minister To Chin Chai. And in true Singaporean fashion, the name of the other two civil servants involved were almost lost to history and only the politician's name remained widely known. This is not a joke by the way, I've checked and it was disgustingly hard to find their names. The names of the other two committee members are Joseph Teo and George G. Thompson, and I was only able to first identify them on this infographic curated by the Singapore Visual Archive, saved on Reddit 10 years ago. If you want to hear me go off about this, it'll be at the end of the video, so you can just skip there or continue watching. There were five other designs for the Singapore flag before we landed on our current one, and each one tells its own story. First, the Red Star. The first flag design was an all red flag with a star in the center. The points of the star is meant to represent the ideals of democracy, peace, progress, justice, and equality. It was rejected because the flag looks kind of communist, which considering Vietnam's flag, I'd say, yeah, the three stars. Another communist looking flag is this draft of the three stars. It's basically a carbon copy of the Malayan people's anti-Japanese flag. A communist guerrilla force, so it was rejected too. The Green Star. So after two failures, we basically asked someone else to do our homework for us and came up with the Green Star, which by the way, is a fucking white star. Why is it called the Green Star? It's white and the Red Star, it's not red. Anyway, it was rejected because you know, the, the green is too symbolic of an Islamic state, which considering that we asked the United Malays National Organization, like yeah, no shit, it's green. It's like asking if the Catholic Church wanted their flag to look golden because of all their stolen goods. This is why you don't have committees design flags. Committees have agendas and they will try to shove that down your throat in any way possible. When was the last time you looked at an organization and thought, these people are virtual source of art right there. The all red. Now we're starting to see something more familiar. The stars and crescent represents exactly what they do today, but the flag was still a no-go because the red was still seen as too communist. So we get the all blue. This is the last flag design before we got to our current flag. And honestly, I can't complain. It's a nice flag and the blue is representative of us as an island nation. 
I still hate the damn stars, but it's far better than what we have. And the name reminds me of One Piece, so that's plus. But the committee didn't like it, so... So what exactly is wrong with Singapore's current flag? Well, for starters, it's meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have any real history. And you might say, hang on Aiden, the stars means democracy, peace, justice, blah blah blah. But the points of the star of Vietnam's flag also represents stuff. We just assigned it to them. We, we made it up like numbers and money. To Chin Chai even said it himself that the flag was his political ideals turned into symbols. He says democracy, peace, progress, justice, and equality. Poof, you get stars. Might as well go McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, A and W, Long John Silver. You'll have the exact same level of allegory. Now, the flag of Nauru. Awesome, a star just south of the equator. They are the star. 12 points representing the 12 original tribes. Alaska, Big Dipper, North Star. The northernmost state. South Africa, the convergence of color and culture. Maryland! Well, I don't know about Maryland, but it looks nice. We made a flag out of things we're not. Instead of the things we are, we're not communists, we're not an Islamic state, we're not one piece. It's not us. But that means it's just not not us, you know? It's not unifying. People in the past have looked at this flag and given it random meanings. Oh, the moon is actually Islamic, or the stars is actually China, the red means prosperity, the white is our sandy beaches. It's absolute nonsense. You can't remember anything concrete about it, so you assign it everything. It means everything and nothing at the same time. It's indecisive. Honestly, look me in the eyes and answer me this. Do you even remember what the stars on our flag means? I've mentioned it three times in this video and let's be honest, you can't even remember it now, can you? Now, do you remember what the Ukrainian flag symbolizes? You do, don't you? Even though I've only mentioned it once, you still remember it because you can connect the flag to a place, to a feeling, to a history. The same with Nauru, with South Africa. And that's my point. Singapore's flag is just fine. And that's a damn shame. Because it reflects us as a country. Not just because it's the first thing the world sees, but our attitude as a nation, as a people. We're just fine. We're fine with everything as long as it doesn't bother our lives. Flag, it's fine. Roads, it's fine. Healthcare, it's fine. Housing, it's fine. Sex? I heard it's fine, I wouldn't know. If I had to give a grade to this flag, it's gonna be like a C-, minus, like just barely a pass. But we can do so much better. Why do we always settle for just fine in Singapore as if not being terrible is the only goal in life? Let's fight for free healthcare, let's advocate for less cars on our road, let's solve the cost of living issues, maybe legalize gay marriage? No. Definitely legalize gay marriage. But maybe those things are too much to accomplish. I get it. So let's start small. Let's start with the flag. You know what? I'll even throw out the first batch of ideas. Red Dot Rising is a bicolor red and white flag. The stars are replaced with a half red circle symbolizing our nation's nickname as the Little Red Dot. The red dot is positioned on the partition as a reference to our nation's location on the equator. The crescent is given far more distinction as both the moon and sun to really bring the look of a nation rising. The second design, set in the sea, takes the color of the rejected all blue flag and bring it to the modern day with a minimalistic design of white sky over blue seas. Purity and unity. The red dot is on the equator with the sun and moon crescent. The design can be moved to the bottom right corner to further mark our status as a Southeast Asian country. Last but not least is the Malayan's tail. It sacrifices some of the rising moon and sun symbolism in favour of the tail of the country's national mascot, the Malayan. The tail features three uniting colours to symbolise the unity and racial harmony of the four major races, the Chinese and Eurasian, Malays and Indians. Also. The flag looks dope as heck in pride colours. You can disagree with my flag designs. I don't care. Come up with a better one. Or choose one of the many other redesigns that people have done. Do anything. Take the first step to improve. To be better than just fine. But remember. No fucking stars. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Like I promised, I'm gonna rant a little about researching the flag. So if you want to click off, now's the time to do it. The original reason for the color red in our flag is not 
meant to 100% symbolize universal brotherhood. It's actually meant to symbolize the blood that flows through our veins, which is pretty hardcore. And why I decided to keep the color in my flag redesigned. Like, there's blood on my flag, y'all. But over the years, that meaning got diluted and the meaning got lost a bit, which is a shame because blood, bruh. That's, that's punk as fuck. On to the community that designed the flag. I mentioned To Chin Chai, who was the officially credited designer. More on this later. Aside from To, I also mentioned George Thomas, who was the PR officer at the time. But it seems that his only contribution was to give To Chin Chai details about other countries' flags. So like old-timey Wikipedia. I'm sure there's a word for it. And the next name I mentioned in quotes, Joseph Teo. It's a very common name and the only mentions I could find of him described him as a 25-year-old newlywed artist. But there's a good chance he's the actual designer of the flag. Because according to To Chin Chai, he himself didn't actually design the flag. He told his political ideas to someone named Mr. Wong and Mr. Wong translated it into a flag. There's a chance that Mr. Wong is actually Joseph Teo cause To did state he could not remember their names by 1981 as it was a long time ago which... Okay, I mean I can remember the name of the random guy I played Pokemon cards with. Hi Marcus, but you can't remember the name of the people who helped you create history. Sure. Anyway, Joseph Teo or Mr. Wong, congratulations you two one you are the true designer of our flag as much as i don't like the flag you should still be credited for our founding history and it is a damn shame that you are not better remembered there are two more sources in the bibliography that i was not able to get my hands on uh, because quite frankly i can't afford the time and resources to do so right now i'm doing what i can with what i have but if you would like to help me be able to afford to dig deeper into future topics i have a patreon link in the description and that's all for today so See you next time. Yeah.